Hi there. Uh, you'll be able to find all the lectures and the worksheets that go along with the lectures if you're going to be doing them in paper form or if you know somebody who doesn't have access to the internet and they need paper forms, uh, tell them they can go to the high school office and everything that I'm doing online is available in, in paper form at the office. So there'll be lectures and uh, worksheets. Hopefully they'll be able to get online to see the lectures. They're on YouTube. Alrighty, this today is, uh, we're going to be graphing some parabolas that are given to us in what we call vertex form. Some books call it standard form as well, which I, I was taught the standard form is a different form, but uh, you'll hear me refer to it as vertex form unless I slip and say standard form. Uh, this is an equation of a parabola, and I'm going to go through what all of these mean. And you've seen this before. This may be the third time we've talked about parabolas. So if this seems very familiar, there's a reason for that. Uh, here's the general form. A will be a number. It will either stretch or compress the function. That, that may ring a bell with you. If it stretches it, it'll take our parabola that's shaped like the letter U, or it'll be shaped like a housetop. You may remember that, or like a hilltop, I'm sorry. And this number will either stretch it, which will make it narrower like a, like a hairpin, or it will flatten it out, depending on whether it's bigger than one or between zero and one. This number and this number will give us uh, the coordinates of the vertex, and this one's counterintuitive. Going left and right counterintuitively inside the parentheses is counterintuitive. This one's not counterintuitive. This goes up or down and it's not in the parentheses. It's not being a quantity squared, so whatever this is, if it's positive, it's going to go let, uh, up or down, uh, I'm sorry, if it's positive it's going to go up, if it's negative it's going to go down. This will go left and right counterintuitively. Translate left or right counterintuitively. So here's what I'm going to be thinking. This is what's going on through my head uh, as I'm graphing these things and hopefully when I'm doing them, showing you how to do them for the third time, uh, it'll make sense. It'll start to click. We want to identify the parent function. Well, the parent function of any quadratic, we know it's quadratic because the highest power is a 2. The parent function is just y equals x squared. So that's our parent function for all quadratics. Identify the parent function, the maximum or minimum, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the domain, the range, transformations on the parent function, and sketch the graph. I'll go ahead and do all that, but for the purposes of our uh, worksheet that's going to be attached, all I want you to do is to be able to look at an equation and then given four graphs, pick out the right graph. Okay, they're going to be multiple choice and I just want you to be able to look at an equation and pick out the right graph. But I'll run through this just to kind of spur your memory. Here we go. Uh, we're looking at this. If there's a minus sign out there, that means this thing is going to open like this. It'll open up and down. That, that may ring a bell. We have talked about these before. Uh, I'm going to locate my vertex first. I'm going to sketch it and then answer, uh, do all this stuff here. Uh, I'm going to go to my vertex. It's going to be from the origin. I'm going to go two to the left and up three. Two to the left and up three. There's my vertex. This thing is going to open downward. And you may remember, we go over one and however far over we go, we square it and we either go up or down. And because it's got a minus sign here, we're going to go down. So I go over 1, 1 times 1 is 1, so I go down 1. From the vertex, I go over 2, and then I square that, which is 4, and I go down 4. However far sideways I go, I square it, and that's how far up or down I go. So I went sideways 2, I square that, I go down 4. Over 3, 1, 2, 3, I square that, that's 9, and I go down 9, 1, 2, 3, uh, right there. And we'll do a mirror image on the other side, over one, down one, over two, down four, over three, down nine. And these just give us an idea of where our curve is going to lie. There's our parabola right there. Uh, the parent function, as I said, it's quadratic. So the parent function, before any of these transformations and translations and whatnot are done, the parent function is y equals x squared. 
the maximum or minimum is the highest or lowest y value. So the highest this thing goes, it'll go down infinitely. My y values will get infinitely smaller and smaller and smaller. But there is the highest y value. In this case, that's a 3. So our maximum will be 3. The vertex is an ordered pair. From the origin, I will go 2 to the left and up 3. 2 to the left and up 3. There's our vertex. The axis of symmetry, and you may remember this from way back when we've done it in the past, is this line that cuts this puppy perfectly in half where one side is a mirror image of the other. Whoops, that's horrible. Try that again. Cuts it perfectly in half. It's a vertical line. And as we remember from Algebra 1, the name of all vertical lines is x equals wherever that line crosses the x-axis. So the name of this vertical line is x equals negative 2, which is our axis of symmetry. That's the line that chops this thing perfectly in half. x equals negative 2. The domain, as you may remember, I would, I would say, what is the domain of this? And you guys would all chant all real numbers. So the domain of all of our parabolas, all of our quadratic functions is all real numbers. The range is y values. Now, y will never be bigger than 3. All my, it'll get infinitely small, then it'll get to 3, and then it'll turn around and get back, you know, heading back towards negative infinity on the y's. And the range is what the y's are limited to. So because the highest value that this thing will reach is 3, our range is all y values that are 3 or smaller. So we would say the range is y values that are equal to 3 or smaller than 3. All y values smaller than or equal to 3 are in the range of this. The domain talks about x motion, sideways motion. This thing will go downward, but it will also keep moving to the left or to the right infinitely. As it goes down, it's also moving to the right. And it'll go to the right and to the left infinitely. So there are no restrictions on left and right motion, but there are restrictions on the range, which is up and down motion. It'll go down infinitely, but the highest point it'll reach is at 3. And the transformations, that's how we slide it. The transformations are 2 to the left and up 3. We took it, the vertex from the origin moved it 2 to the left and up 3. So I would just go transformations 2 left, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 3 up. And that probably rings a bell. On the worksheet, all I want you to do though, I won't ask you to do any of this, this is just to kind of spur your memory. All I want you to do is look at this equation and you'll be given four graphs and I want you to pick out the right graph. All right, let's take a look at what I have. What else I have here? I'm just going to run through graphing these real quick, and uh, then hopefully you'll have enough of an idea of how to pick, you know, it'll spur your memory enough to be able to pick out the right graph given an equation of a parabola. So here we go. Uh, if I were going to graph this, I would locate my vertex at positive, I'd go from the origin, positive 1, and then down two. This one is counterintuitive, this one is not. So I'm going to go from the origin, right one, down two. Here's my vertex. This is positive, so it's going to open upward. If it was negative, it would open downward. So I'm going to go from the vertex. I go over one, I square that and go up one. Over two from the vertex, over two, and go up four. One, two, three, four. From the vertex, I go over 3 and I square that, and that's how far up I go. So I go up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It takes me a little bit off my graph, but that gives me a real good idea of, of where it lies. Then I go to the left of the vertex and do the same thing. 1 to the left, up 1. It's a mirror image. 2 to the left, up 4. 3 to the left, up 9. And this is what the curve would look like. Roughly. So if I had this equation, I would look to see which one has a vertex here and make sure that it opens upwards. And chances are that would be the correct one to pick. Uh, this one is being stretched by a factor of two, so I'll remind you how to do that graphically. I'm going to go, again, we have the same vertex. 
uh, from the origin, I'm going to go one to the right and up to, I guess that's not the same vertex, is it? Oh, one to the right and down to. I don't know, up from down. There we go. And normally I would go from the vertex, I'd go over one and I would square that and go up one. But however far up I'm going to go, I'm going to double it because this is going to stretch it. So I'll, I would go over one, up one normally. So instead of going over one, up one, I'm going to go from the vertex over one, and then I double how far up I go, up two. From the vertex, normally I'd go over two and up four. I square that. But because I'm going to be stretching it, I'm going to go over two, and instead of up four, I'm going to go up eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it really stretches it, closes it down. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Over one, up two, over two. Instead of up four, I go up eight. And it's made it narrower. That's called a vertical stretch. See how much narrower that is? It stretches, it takes your curve and goes whoop. If I were going to graph this one, I'd say, okay, this one's going to open down because I see it's got a minus sign, so it's going to look roughly like that. And now I just want to figure out exactly where it's going to lie and then try to graph it without making any mistakes. I'm going to go from the origin, I'm going to go one to the left and up two. One to the left, up two. Counterintuitive, not counterintuitive. This is going to go downward, and it's not stretched or compressed, so I'm going to go over one, down one. Over two, I square that and I go down four. Over three, down nine, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. And I do the mirror image over here, over two, down four, over three, down nine. And that gives me a real good idea of where this curve is going to lie in the Cartesian coordinate plane. Whoops, I missed that horribly. Let's see if I can do that again. It's a little better. So there's where our curve should look roughly like. It's not stretched or compressed because this is just an invisible or an implied one. And uh, it will open downward and the vertex is at negative one, two. From the origin, negative one, two. Okay, this one is going to be stretched by a factor of two. It's going to open downward. It's going to have the same vertex. I'm going to go one to the left and up two. From the, vert, from the origin, I'm going to go one to the left, counterintuitive, and up two. And then when I go to graph it, when I go sideways one, normally I'd square that and go down one. But because I'm being stretched by a factor of two, my vertical motion is going to be double. So I go over one, down one, but instead of going down one, I go over one and down two. If it weren't stretched, I go over two and down four. One, two, three, four. If it weren't stretched, but because it is stretched, I'm going to go over two and down eight, which is right there. And then we do the same thing on the other side. It's a mirror image over one, down one. Over two, down eight. And there's a curve. It's made it skinnier. Okay. Have the same vertices. This one has been stretched by a factor of two, so it's narrower. It's been kind of stretched out. All right. And got two more. This one is being multiplied by a number that is between zero and one, so that's going to be a compression. And what a compression does is it takes your normal curve and it flattens it out, and you'll see how that works. Uh, I'm going to locate my vertex first, two to the right and down three from the origin, two to the right and down three. So there's my vertex. This is going to open upward because it's positive. And I'm just going to start locating points and this will come into play when I locate them. Normally from here, I will go one to the right and then square that and then go up one. One times one is one. But before I do my vertical motion, I've got to multiply it by one half. So instead of going over one, up one. I'm going to go over one and then up one half of how far I would normally go. 
though, so I go half of that. Normally I'd go over two, square that and go up four. That's what I would normally do. But because I've got this compression factor, I'm going to go over two, and instead of going up four, I go up half of that. So I go up two. Half of four is two. Uh, normally I go over three. I square that and go up nine. And then I've got to take this compression factor into account, so I'm going to go up half of nine, which is four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. And that gives me an idea of what the curve will look like. It'll be a mirror image on the other side. Over one, up one half. Over two, up two, half of four. Over three, I would go up nine normally, but I go up half of that, which is four and a half. Let's see if I get one, two, three, four and a half. Uh, I might be able to fit. If I go over one, two, three, four, I would go up 16. Half of 16 is eight. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That actually shows up here, so it'll look kind of like this. I'm carrying my curve all the way to the border of my graph. So this arrow indicates that it'll keep going up like that. Uh, just, I've reached the border of my graph, so it's going to stop there. And that's what that one would look like, roughly. Okay, and the last one. If you just have x squared, you can think of it like this. y is equal to 3. It's stretched by a factor of 3. x plus or minus 0, quantity squared, minus 5. You can think of x squared as x plus or minus 0, quantity squared. And I'm going to make that a little bit neater because that looks horrible. And we might want to think of it that way just so we can find the uh, vertex real easily. So from the origin, I'm going to go sideways 0 and then down 5. Counterintuitive 0 is 0. And this one is not counterintuitive. It's outside the parentheses, so it's over 0, down 5. So there's my vertex. I'm going to find my point now. Normally, I go over 1, square that, and go up 1. But because I have this stretch factor right here, However far vertical I go, I'm going to triple that now. So instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm going to go over 1, up 3. 1, 2, 3. Normally I'd go over 2 and up 4. So I'm going to go over 2 and triple that and go up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Which takes me a little bit off of my graph, but that's okay. When we do this mirror image on the other side, over 1, up 3. Over 2, I'd normally go up 4, but I've got to triple that because of my stretch factor and go up 12. It takes me just a little bit off my graph. So this has made it quite a bit narrower uh, than a normal parabola. Stretched it by a factor of 3. Let's see if I can get this. That's not too bad. And there we are. That's uh, graphing these things. And if you can graph them, then you can use you can uh, easily find uh, the correct graph in a multiple choice situation, which is what you'll have on the worksheets when I can finally get them attached. Uh, you'll be given the equation of a parabola. You'll be given four graphs, and you just got to pick the right one. Okay, that's what we're doing. With that in mind, uh, best of luck. And in the not too distant future, I'll be posting a little mini video uh, called Conic Sections that will tie all, everything that we've talked about uh, together, I hope. Good luck.